Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Glory. Oh, yeah, turn it this way a little. No, no, you can leave it there, babe. Just turn it. Okay, that's cool. Thank you. Glory. Isn't God good all the time? <laughs> if you're in position, he's good all the time. Well, glory to the Lamb of God. What a time and season. Everything is happening. We are blessed and highly flavored. We are appointed and anointed to be about the Father's business. Because that's what we live for. That's why we are alive. Amen? We are alive to be about the Father's business. If we're not about the Father's business, then we're dead. That's bottom line to it. And Deuteronomy chapter 30. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, in verse 11, let's speak it together. For this is the commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it too far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Does everybody understand, hear it and do it? Amen. Amen. But the word is very near to you in your mouth, and in your heart that you may do it. See, I've set before you today life, a day, today life and what? Good and death and evil. And that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. His commandments are his word. These are called law. Anything God speaks becomes law. Amen. His statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. How many of y'all know you could be the God? I announce to you today that you shall surely perish you shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that, you both, that both you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. Everyone say, cling to him. Cling. Now, that's very powerful because the Lord says, if you grab hold of me, I'll grab hold of you. When you let go of me, I'm letting go of you. That's the word of God. So many people think, well, God never leaves you. Of course he does, and he owns everything. You live and breathe in here. But he will let you go. Amen? He will let you go. To let you go eat dirt, he'll let you go. End up in the pig pen, he'll let you go. Doesn't mean he left you, but he'll let you go. But he hasn't left anyone. How can he? We live and breathe and ever being in his creation. So he's always there looking and seeing. Amen? Amen. But there are things that he's telling us. Look at These are called life choices. 
that grab hold of him and keep him near to us. Life choices. We're either making life choices or death choices, one or the other. He said in verse 20 again, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life. Nothing else is your life. Nothing. When something else becomes your life, it becomes an idol. That you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and give them again. He says, I've set before you today life and death, but I, I want you to choose life. That means you must make life choices. Amen? Life choices. Now, let me share something with you. Every one of us has gone through stuff. Amen? Amen. One of the things the Spirit said to me today, he said, anyone who continues to look back at how things were is a fool. Even if they were good. He says, because even though it was good, you're still looking in your past. He said, that's a fool. So in other words, he said to me, I never want you to look at the things that were, whether they were good or bad. Why? Because I'm the God of new. No matter what has gone in your life, whether it was good or bad, you never want to go back and go, hey, I want to get, I, I sure wish things were the way they used to be. Never. He considers us a fool. He is the God of new. Does everybody understand that? That is the deception of the enemy. Well, I used to do this. I used to do that. I've done, forget it. I was successful in this and an idiot in that. Forget it. You will not advance it all into the new if you're still holding on to anything of the old. It keeps, what does it do? It influences wrong choices. Does everybody understand? Now listen, we've made mistakes, amen? We want to learn from our mistakes. But we never want to go back on our successes and all of our failures, our all the big things, we don't want to ever go back on anything. Why? Because it keeps a person connected to what? The world. See, we are in the process of disconnect. We must disconnect before you can connect. If you're not disconnected, you can't connect. And if you can't connect, you can't reset. Does everybody understand that? We talked about some of this Sunday? What's today? Tuesday here. Is everybody all right? Amen. So we set, he said, I set before you life and death. Choose life. So that means that you and I must make choices that pertain to life, not death. Is everybody all right? Amen. Romans 2. Romans chapter 2. You know, we have a tendency to always be influenced by the things that were. And you know what that does is reattaches to emotion. It reattaches to people, places, and things. Until those are cut loose completely. Emotionally. And everything else in, in us. We can't step into the new. You won't. Why? Because you're still attached to the past. But I used to. I sure wish. <laughs> People wishing to live in the past. I want to live from the future, not the past. I'm waiting for God to do something new in everything. In business, in ministry, in marriage, everything. I'm waiting for something new to come all the time. I'm not living in the past. Because if you do, you can't advance forward. 
and you'll be entangled. You can never disconnect. And if you can't disconnect, you can't connect. Amen? And if you can't connect, you can't get reset. If you can't get reset, you can't get refreshed. Romans 2, verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man or woman, whoever you are, who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same thing. But we know that the judgment of God is according to what? Truth. Against those who practice such things. Or do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance. But in accordance with your hardness and your impentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds or his choices. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance, in other words, endurance and continue, and doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of a man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works. Their word works is associated with cooperation or cooperational choices. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you're now making life choices, not death choices. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works or cooperates with choices. What is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Wow. Choices that lead to life or to death. Our choices not only affect us, but our present, future, destiny, family, friends, and sometimes their family and friends. Amen? They affect your co-workers, everything. Businesses, career, people, choices. It takes one choice to get us right out of the position. One choice. So there are businesses, there's good and evil, or there's righteous choices. Good, evil, or righteous. I'm going to say it again. Good, evil, or righteous choices. There's three choices you can make. Before I got saved as an addict, my choices were always leading to death. I was bringing hurt, pain, and death constantly. Every choice. It could have been a good drug deal and made a lot of money that day. But it was still leading to death. It was a choice of death, even though there was a lot of profit. See, people are always looking at things of prosperity is a life choice when it can actually be a death choice. I brought pain, hurt, despair, and death in every direction. There was a ripple effect of everything I did and everything you and I do. To everyone associated with me in my life, anyone that knew me or knew of me was affected. Everyone. <clears throat> Hallelujah. To offer a temporary moment of pleasure can result in eternal torment. Offer a temporary moment of pleasure resulting into eternal torment. Why? Life choices 
or death choices. Everything we make in a decision is a choice. A choice is a free will from God. He'll never force you to make a choice. He will try to lead you, amen, but he'll never force you. So many times people are, are waiting on a decision or a choice and they're expecting God to speak to them and he won't. Because sometimes there is no other choice. Does everybody understand it? And he's going to say, you're going to either accept the righteous choice or you're going to reject my choice. So sometimes it's, he isn't going to tell you because it's so plain and simple. So people sometimes are waiting on what to do when you already know what to do. In Philippians chapter 2. Life choices or death choices. You know, a word tells us whatever a man sows, he what? Reaps. <laughs> In other words, that's a representation of what you're choosing. Amen? Amen. What you choose, you're going to reap. One is leading to death and one is leading to life. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Hallelujah, let's speak it. Is everybody okay? Amen. You know, sometimes I wonder, how, you know, the Lord knows what's happening. Sometimes these things just fly up and it's like, What? And from sometimes when something comes to me in this arena, it's like, well, man, everybody knows. And then I get this sense from the Lord of like, just do it. <laughs> okay. And sometimes I don't realize what was released until a day or two later. Sometimes I don't have the full understanding during when it's being released, but it will come to me tomorrow. Oh, happy days. In verse 12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, when you hear work out or work, we know that it's associated with cooperation. But these are cooperating choices. They're what? Cooperating choices. Amen. Hopefully cooperating choices of life and not death. Amen. If you're cooperating with God, you're not going to make a death choice except for death to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, happy days. <laughs> for it is God who what? Works in you both to what? Will and to do his good pleasure. So do all things without what? Complaining. Is that a choice? Is it leading to life or death? Think about it. It takes one corruptible seed to begin to expand and grow. You start grumbling and complaining, the next thing you're cussing, the next thing you know you're doing this, the next thing you're doing that, the next thing you're obedient, disobedient, then all kinds of things. Doing things that you know you're not supposed to do and justifying about it. One seed of corruption. That's all it takes. He says, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. <laughs> In other words, work out, cooperate with life choices, holding 
not swaying from the word of faith, amen, and choosing life choices, not death choices. But you know, you got to be able to see what's the end result of things. So many times people are so short-sighted they can't see what the end result is. In Mark 8, Oh, hallelujah. Mark chapter 8. And you know what? We know what the choices are. We know what's life choices and death choices. We know. <laughs> Why? Because we're born with it. But we just choose to justify. Believe me, when I was getting high, I knew every time I stuck a needle in my arm or I smoked dope or did anything, I was take, making a death choice. Of course, I used to say before I would use, God, if I die, take me home. Hey, I was an idiot. What can I tell you? I used to blow everybody else's high. <laughs> Dear God, if I die, take me home. <laughs> you know what he said? I can't. And I still did it. I can't. That's when two angels showed up in my room. And they were over on the side, in a corner, and, they were, and I was wired for sound. And they were talking to each other, looking at me. And they said, look what he's doing with his life. Talk about freak me out. And they were up in the corner in this room. And they were talking to one another. Look at what he's doing with his life. Snap me right out of everything I was doing. It was like Narcan. <laughs> Look at what he's doing with his life. In other words, I realize that life is from God. This is a life from a creator that loves me. And I was abusing this life. Abusing it, misusing it. Choosing death decisions instead of life decisions. Not promoting the life that he gave me but destroying it. I was on a self-destruction path. Mark 8, 34. He said, now when Jesus saw that he... I said Mark 8, 34. Thank you. Hallelujah. When he had called the people, everyone say people, people. to himself and who else? His disciples also, he said, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow. Whoever de desires to save his life will lose it. <laughs> but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this uh, adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. Wow. Deny when he says deny yourself, it means that that's what we have that saying, it's a good day to die. Amen? Die to who? Self. It means to die to self. Dying to self means you have to make a life choice. That life choice means disconnect. 
disconnect from the world, disconnect from every person, place, and thing, disconnect from every emotional attachment of people, places, and things, disconnect from all your past especially. What does the word say? Unless you cleanse yourself from the latter, you can't be used. Amen? Disconnect. That means people, places, things, associations, all kinds of things that used to promote death or the world. Because the world promotes death. That's why there's a tree of good and evil. But the tree of good and evil still promotes death. It doesn't promote life. Only the tree of life promotes life. And that the only thing that can pr produce is righteousness. So you can make a choice of good or evil that will still lead to death. Until you make a righteous choice, which is pleasing to God, which leads to life. Is everybody okay? Amen. Romans 6. Life choices. So if you don't read the word of God, are you going to know life choices? No. If you're not baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, are you going to know life choices? See, conviction comes so that you and I can change from a death choice to a life choice. See, we should be looking for conviction, not waiting for it. Gosh, I think I'll do this. I wonder if I'll get convicted. Too late. We should look for conviction before we make the choice. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you before you even do it. He usually says, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? That's called conviction. <laughs> if you've never heard it, then you're ignoring conviction. Romans 6, 5. And if you believe that God is only speaking to you without convicting you, that ain't God. In fact, he'll convict you. Why are you agreeing with that? If you're not hearing that, then you better be careful. Why are you agreeing with that thought? Does everybody understand that? Why are you agreeing? Look at, why are people agreeing with these politicians that are heathens, liars, murderers, extortioners? Because they don't hear God's voice. There is no conviction. Their hearts have become hardened. They've already made death decisions, death choices. They are on their way to death unless they are rescued somehow. Verse 5, let's speak it. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, how many of y'all know that your old man promotes death? And it ain't to self. It's to you. Remember, your old man is the offspring of Satan. Your new man is a new creation off of Christ. The old man is still an offspring of darkness. He's a promoter. That's why Jesus said to them, you are all the, father, the children, your father is of the devil. You and I were born in darkness. That's why you must be born again or you're going to hell. Real simple. And after you get born again, you better follow. Or you're going to follow the wrong path. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Knowing this, that our old man, the offspring of darkness, was crucified with Jesus, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin or slaves of death. For he who has died has been free from sin. Now, hello, he who has died. You know, unless a 
seed is planted and it dies, then it grows. Amen? In everything, there is no beginning until there's a death. <laughs> until something comes to an end, then there is a beginning. So until we come to the end of everything, of our past, until we come to the end and disconnect from everything, there cannot be a new beginning. We'll stay stuck. We'll still fight to try and things, bring things back from the past into the present, and you'll never advance. Never advance. Oh, hallelujah. For he who has died has been freed from sin, the presence of evil and control of sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead. That means deny yourself of everything of your past to the present. Amen. Indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its, in its lusts or its voices. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Say it again, being alive from the dead. That's how we're to present ourselves. But how can you present yourself alive from the dead if you've not disconnected yet? You can't. You can present yourself all day long and nothing's changing. Why? Because you're still connected to your past. Does everybody grab hold of this? This is essential now. Oh, hallelujah. Like, <clears throat> therefore, do not let sin... Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And go to verse 14. For sin, the presence of evil, shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but you are under grace, which is God's plan to escape. Hello. It's amazing how they use, misuse grace, man. I'm so tired of hearing that. Oh, you're saved by grace. You can go do anything. How stupid can you be and still breathe? That's doctrines of demons, not doctrines from my dad. We're to be dead with him. Die to self. Die to, and that means disconnect from the worldly sin, lust, and selfish ambitions. Disconnect. From choice, uh, choice, life choices that produce death. Amen? Disconnect. Why? To connect so that you can reset. <laughs> Listen, this process brings us to what we call a perfect sound mind. A perfect sound mind. That's what this process does for me and you. So that we're not moved. Too many people are emotionally offense <laughs> they ain't disconnecting from nothing especially themselves well, I, I'm just I, that's just my nature yeah it's called the old man who's a child of the devil they want to argue about everything they want to justify about everything well I was offended well you're supposed to be dead I've never seen a dead man offended See, this is how we know where we're at. People that are still fighting for their lives are still connected to the world. Amen. They're still connected to their past. They're still remembering all the wonderful things of their past. Forget it. That's a fool. These choices are free will choices. Amen? Now, let me share. God gives you a free will, right? Your free will of carnality, your old man, is a controlling will. It always wants control. 
wants control of everything. The free will of the eternal new creation is a surrender will. It's a surrender will to the creator and a controller will over the old man. Does everybody get it? So when you surrender your will to the creator, he takes control over the old man. And this will produce life choices. Every place that you are dissolving to your carnality of old man, of self, is an opportunity for the spirit of life to access and replace. Without a desire of death to a place in your members, Holy Spirit is rejected. He only comes to bring life, so there must be death. Oh, get this. I'm going to say that again. He only comes to bring life, so there must be death. Death to what? Self, members, desires, past, everything. That means God must be your fulfillment. Not your spouse, not your job, not your children, not your friends, not your abilities, not your talents, not your completions, not your successes. Your fulfillment only comes from his presence. Romans 8. And when it's not coming from his presence, it's because there's a disconnect from his presence and a connect to the world. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh. Now listen, walking according to the flesh means death choices. So if you're walking, that means you have a choice. You have a choice to walk anywhere you want, don't you? Walking according to the flesh means you're making death choices. Walking according to the spirit means you're making life choices. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, and what is the law of the spirit of life? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. In Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in his flesh that the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement. It doesn't say good requirement, and it doesn't say evil requirement. It says righteous requirement. Amen. Of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Again, walking according to the flesh is death choices. Walking according to the spirit is life choices. Amen. Good. First Peter chapter two. Oh, yes. Life-changing decisions. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. <clears throat> Let's speak it. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. That's fleshly decisions or choices, life cho uh, death choices. He says, abstain from death choices. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good, con your good works or your what? Righteous choices. Amen which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. 
Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors or to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good or making what? Life choices, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using this freedom as a cloak for vice, but as a bondservants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Works, remember works, works of cooperation with the Holy Spirit brings life choices. Proverbs 3. And the word says something, all things will work to the good to those who love the Lord and call it according to his purpose. But see, he says, the word says, if you love me, you'll obey me. So it takes a life choice cooperation for it to work to the good or it never will work to the good. Amen? In other words, you've got to stop making death choices and start making life choices. And there's no but in that. <laughs> there's no compromise in that. That's where the enemy loves to come in. Justification and compromise. Self-justification. Proverbs 3, verse 1. My son and daughter, do not forget my law or my words or my commands, but let your heart keep my what? Commands, laws, and words, things that I spoke. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Hello. Okay, so if he's telling you what's going on, don't forget these things. Why? Because everything he says is a life choice. Anything the devil says is a death choice. Verse 3. Oh. Is everybody there? Uh, verse 3. Let's speak it. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Why? If you make what? Life choices. Submit to those things. Follow. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. That is a life and death choice right there. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Oh, snap. Acknowledge him. Is that a life or death choice? Life choice. And why don't people acknowledge him before they make choices? Most of the time because they don't want to hear. <laughs> Heck no, I ain't going to counsel. Are you kidding me? I might know the truth. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your path. In other words, assist you in making life choices. Don't be wise in your own eyes, wise guy. Fear the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect him. And then you'll depart from evil. That's a life choice. It will be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Oh, here's another life choice. With the first fruits of all of your increase, what a life choice. Why? So your bounds will be filled with plenty. See, God rewards life choices. And your vats will overflow with new wine. That's fresh presents. My son, don't despise the slap of the Lord. Nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, hello, <laughs> he corrects. Yes, he convicts, he chastens, and he steps back. Sometimes he says, let's get this over with. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Choices. What did he say? Choice. Don't forget. 
Don't forget. Keep this before you all the time. Don't forget. Stir yourself up. Don't forget to assemble so you can get remember. remember. Don't forget. What? Don't forget to practice these things. Don't forget to choose and trust in him. Don't forget to acknowledge him. Don't forget to reverence him. Don't forget to depart from evil. Accept correction. Why? Because correction brings a choice of death to a choice of life. Amen? And please, don't forget to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Glory. Verse 1. Life choices. Did you ever hear anybody say, man, I was there at the wrong time? It was a death choice, that's why. You don't think I was trying to make a way of escape? Every time. Listen, if anything happens in my life, I repent. Why? Because somehow I didn't hear him or wasn't paying attention. Because he's always trying to avoid an accident. He's always trying to avoid harm to us. Amen. He's always trying to avoid destruction to us. And he's always trying to expose the enemy so he doesn't steal from us. He's always trying to avoid these things in our life. But if we're out of order, we're not hearing. Why? Because the first thing the enemy releases to an individual is a deaf and dumb spirit. Why? Because he knows that that deaf and dumb spirit comes and that person can't hear correctly. It nullifies them, dumbs them. It enslaves them to where they can't hear God, but every other voice. Boy, they hear every other voice. And I've seen that spirit. <clears throat> and once that occurs, that person can't see correctly, hear correctly, can't obey. It's the first thing that's released. That and familiar spirits. Deaf and dummies and spirit and familiar. Verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. The word says, those who set their thoughts on the Lord have peace. A person who can't sit still and have peace because their minds aren't set. They got to constantly move or constantly say something. They got no dominion over their tongue because the mind of Christ hasn't been developed yet. I don't care how long a person's been a believer. I know believers that still ain't developed yet. 40 years, 50 years. Oh, they've been going to church, paying their tithes, and doing their. They've been good people. Good people. But they're still immature. They've been doing stuff that stunts their growth, agreeing with things, touching and agreeing with them. Stunts their maturity. They stay the same. And it's usually done because they're still connected. Connected to the past, connected to associations, connected to all kinds of things. Still living on their successes of the past, still living on their failures of the past. All that's got to go. Set your mind in the things above. See, the things above is the things of the future. Amen. Not in the things of the earth, which is the past. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to what? Death. death. When he says put to death, it means disconnect yourself from these things. Put to death your members, which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, 
covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. In other words, because we made death choices. But now you ourselves are to put off all these death choices, like anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And they have put on the what? New man. The new man is supposed to be promoting choices of life. But if the old man is still in control, it will be promoting the choices of death choices. And put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek, Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. Put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, 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 humbleness, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another. Doesn't mean you have to put up with one another, just bear with them. <laughs> you know, trust is earned, amen? Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. It means you forgive everyone, it doesn't mean you trust everyone. Use wisdom. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. thankful. Grateful, no matter what. Thankful and grateful. Praise God. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Thank you, Lord, for rescuing me from all death choices. James 3.13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct, which is what? Life choices. That his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, don't boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, that's submissive, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Would you go to Psalm 40 for a minute? Psalm 40. Everybody there? Let's speak it. I what? Wait. I what? Wait. I what? Wait. Is that a life choice? Yeah. Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. That's a life choice. I waited patiently for the Lord. Why? Because that life choice, what happened? He, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. See, anxiousness is not a life choice. It's a death choice. A person that is anxious can't wait. Amen? I waited patiently for the Lord. He endured. He also brought me out of the horrible pit, the trouble that I was in because I made a death choice. But now I'm waiting. <laughs> this time I am waiting. <laughs> out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Woohoo! What? I made a life choice and he put me back on the path. 
He put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Bless is that man who makes the Lord his trust. Is that a life decision? Yeah. Amen. Life choice. Do not and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside the lies. I'm going to say that again. Bless is the man who makes the Lord his trust and doesn't respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Bless is the man that doesn't associate with it. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they're more than can be numbered. Wow. Wow. Philippians 2. Life choices. That's why we have to pray for divine intervention to people who are making death choices. Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there's any what? Consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. So what is he trying to, to do? Get like-minded with the mind of Christ so we make what? Life choices. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. In other words, you're looking at somebody or whatever, finding out that they're making death choices. Amen? So you want to pray for them. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of a... Man, selfish ambitions or conceit, death choices. Again, the enemy's always going to try and replace a life choice with a death choice. Amen? As we die naturally and humanly and carnally and selfishly, to every evil thing and stop making death choices... <laughs> We start making life choices, which allows the Holy Spirit of life to take over. Amen? And in that, now, now what begins to happen is when he has access to all of our members and memories and decisions and choices that promote life eternal in a temporary realm, even your desires change. Everything changes. Your wants, your desires your, the discernment, everything begins to change. Why? Because you're disconnected from the world. You're connected to the eternal, and you're reset in the eternal. Now you're refreshed, you're restored, you're renewed. You have dominion over the old man, and you're yielding your will to the Lord to make life choices. That's a Christ-like life. In Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Verse 21. I think. Oh, Sneha. Oh, I'm in Psalms, that's why. <laughs> well, that was good, though. It says here in Psalm 18, don't go there, in verse 20, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not done anything wickedly and depart or departed from my God. For all of his judgments were before me. Woohoo. 
and I did not put away his statutes from me. I, uh, I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. In other words, he rewarded him according to what? Life choices. Amen. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Let's speak it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow. So there are life choices and, and death choices, and there are life words and death words. Amen? And they will usually parallel. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. These choices are words. Amen? Somebody who doesn't have dominion over their tongue makes too many death choices. First John chapter 3. And why are they making too many death choices? Because they're not disconnected from the past, from the old man. To react is a death choice. To respond is a life choice. Why? Because when you react, you're reacting according to the old man. That means you're actually fighting for your life when you react. 1 John 3, verse 7. Let's speak it. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who what? Practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Okay, so if you're practicing righteousness, are you making life choices? Yes. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now that word might means that there's cooperation with his body to continue destroying the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Is practice a choice? Amen. So if we practice life choices... We bring life. We fellowship with life. And it's not the temporary life. This is the eternal life, forever life. You know, so many times we take that eternal word not long enough because it becomes so common. But it's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we'll close at Philippians 3 before we go on forever. Oh, yeah. Verse 7. Life choices. Now, we've made choices by mistake. Amen? I know one time I got a call from someone. They, they put uh, eardrops in their child's eye by mistake. And uh, we just directed him, you know, flood that eye, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but, you know, people make mistakes, amen. But even in the mistake, God is there. There's innocent mistakes, which can be a death choice, amen. But God is there to redirect. But that's, if, if we would acknowledge him before we did it, we would make more life choices. Lord, should I use this stuff? How about read the stinking label? (laughs) 
Anyways, <laughs> praise God. Philippians 3, verse 7. <laughs> I'm going to make a life choice. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of y'all know you can't read every label if you don't have your glasses with you? And I have to pull people off the street. Can you read this for me? In the stores. Yo, wait a minute over here. Come here. What's up? Would you read this for me? <laughs> I'm at Lowell's. Could you read this for me? <laughs> Praise God. I hate when I forget my glasses. And I got 60 pair. <laughs> and they all, know, they all end up in the same place. Sometimes. It's the place I don't know where they're at. Verse 7, let's speak it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? Is that a life choice? Oh, come on. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. In other words, disconnect from everything. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them all as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may what? That I may what? Know. know him. Know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I've already attained it all or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on. I continue to make life choices that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, in other words, cutting loose, and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Now, the less to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk, let us make the choices of life by the same rule, and let us be of the same mind. Praise God. Life choices. Got to disconnect to get connected. Once you get connected, you can get reset. Then you can get refreshed, renewed, and so forth, and make life choices. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that you uh, protect the seed that has been parted through your word to each and every one here. And that it would not only grow and bear fruit for your glory, but that it would be put into practice with discernment, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we become more sensitive to those things of life and death choices, life and death words, life and death agreements. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed.